Hey guys and welcome back to another tutorial video. This one is on kind of like dynamic moving lights or maybe light sensors, whatever I called the video. Um, so I set up a little room to show you guys what exactly I'm talking about. So see how it's dark in there? Watch this. So when I go inside, the lights turn on. And when I go out, the lights turn off. So it's kind of like player sensor lights. So it detects when the player's in the room and when they're not in the room. So if they're in the room, lights on. If they're not in the room, lights off. You can do the opposite. I'll show you how to do both things that I'm demonstrating here, um, but more on the second one. This one is pretty easy. So this next one is a little bit cooler. This is what I did in my last video. Uh, Cloud teaches anything, just a little joke kind of uh, thing that I might start doing. Um, but anyway, so there was this tunnel that Benny walked through and the lights, as you see, are where I'm standing. So check that out. And they follow me as I walk through here. Just like that. And there is a little bit of lag because I'm streaming. Uh, this is a really laggy thing to do in your world, so I would not do it on a server, uh, maybe in a map at one specific point. But it is a very laggy thing to do. And the light is at, at the end of the tunnel is staying there only because I accidentally was off by one number. It's not some kind of weird bug. They should all disappear. It's just really weird. Um, but yeah, so as you walk through it, the lights follow you. It looks a lot better when you're not recording just because of, uh, basically just because I'm recording on a crappy computer. So those two factors combined just makes it kind of bad. Anyways, so that's the two things that I want to show you today. So the first one is pretty easy. I just have a really kind of slowish clock going here. And what I do is I check for if the player's in the room. So I pick, I go to here, I look for the positive corner where the, uh, where the two arrows are going to be pointing in the direction that doesn't look weird. Like that would look weird. Uh, like this. So you want to basically make the, I'm, I don't know if you see what I'm talking about, this thing here, you want to make them kind of like highlight the room. It's hard for me to explain what, it, what I'm doing here, but I lined it up so that it's in the corner. Uh, that means that this direction is positive, this direction positive. You don't have to do that. I prefer to do that. So then you type in x equals in one of the coordinates. So we are at 926, y equals 57, and z equals negative 484. So this is a 5 by 5 room. So all I have to do is if I want to get to the make a square around this room of picking this room instead of using radius, I want to do, uh, I want to make it one, two, three, four blocks in the Z and one, two, three, four blocks in the X and it doesn't matter, three blocks, four blocks in the Y. So DX equals four, DY equals four, DZ equals four. So these, the DZ and the DX, if you don't know already, I'm sorry that you might not be able to see my whole thing since my screen recorder is not complete. Um, so the DX, DY, DZ are kind of like the equivalent of doing tildes. So if you were doing, uh, move it over for you, slash fill, and then you have some coordinates, X, Y, Z, and then from those coordinates, you're going four, four, four. So it's really easy to select square areas this way or rectangle areas this way, any kind of uh, rectangular shape. Um, so anyway, so you pick that and you're testing if a player is in that area. And then if they are, then it is setting the blocks up here to redstone blocks to power the lamps. If they are not, which this is just a redstone torch, which act. So when this powers, when, when it finds a player inside, comparator goes into this block, turning this torch off and setting the blocks to redstone. When the player leaves, the comparator turns off and this redstone torch turns back on, powering this, which sets it to air. Kind of went a little bit complicated in the explanation, but it's really simple what it's doing. On, off, on, off, okay. So now we move on to the one that's more complicated. This one basically takes that idea and then takes it to another level. So this one uses, I, I'm using repeating command blocks for this one. So first we want to check if a player is in the tunnel and I do so not with the test for, but in a similar fashion. So I select the tube. So I go to the positive corner of the tube, which is right here, positive corner inside the tube. I get the X, Y, Z coordinates of this corner. Then I get the tilde, the directional D, Y, D, X, D, Z coordinates to make it select just the center of this tube. So anybody in the center of the tube, that's what this is. And we are giving them a tag. So then it is executing at anybody in the tube with the tag and teleporting an armor stand, that's a special armor stand, this is a special armor stand, to x equals negative 927, y equals 55, and the tilde. So what the why I use slash teleport instead of slash tp, slash tp is going to exec basically say, if I'm teleporting at p, tilde, 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 it's going to teleport me to 
uh, zero blocks in the X, Y, or Z. So if I do slash TP at P tilde 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 one, it's going to teleport me one in the X based off of where I'm standing, okay? So I can't do that because that's not what I want. What I want is to execute at the player standing in this tube, right? So I want to see a person standing here. And I want to make the armor stand be in this exact place. I want it all along this line here. I want the armor stand to be somewhere along this line. But in terms of the Z direction, this is the Z direction, I want the armor stand to be where the player is. So armor stands here if the player's standing there, armor stands here if the player's standing there, and vice versa. But I want it to remain in the X direction. So I want it to be in this perfect X and Y position. So you take the X and Y position, which is negative 927 and 55, and then based off of where the player's standing, that's what the teleport, teleport command is doing. So it's executing at the armor stand. Based off of where the armor stand is, where the player is, it'll teleport the armor stand to where the player is, but at x equals 927 and 55, and teleport it to the player's z position. So if the player has a z position of negative 493, as I do right now, it will teleport the armor stand to negative 927, 55, negative 493. If I'm at negative 488, it'll do negative 953, 555, negative 488. So it's going to move the armor stand to where the player is uh, on this thin one block radius. So it'll just be, it'll just mess around with the Z direction based on where the player is. Then what we do is we fill this entire tube, which is part of the reason why this extra thing gets left at the end, because I didn't pick a big enough tube. I didn't make it fill the whole tube, but it is filling this huge tubes area with, um, Basically, it's filling it with stone if there's any uh, redstone block. So basically, this redstone block is constantly being set to stone if I'm inside the tube. Uh, if not, then it won't won't do that command because I don't want there to be lag, minimal lag. So it just it makes sure that somebody is in the tube, and then if they are, it is filling the uh, the spots in there which are redstone blocks to be stone. Then after that. It is executing, if I'm in the tunnel, it is executing at the armor stand, and it is cloning this big structure. I just covered it up so there's less lighting updates, but this structure is basically one slice of the tube. It's one piece of the tube, fully lit up lights with redstone blocks and all, excuse me, and it is just moving this to here if I'm in the tube, okay? So basically, as it moves along, it's going to move this thing, this lit up ring, to where I'm standing in the tube, and it will replace the old one, the old redstone blocks which are making the, the ring lit up with stone, so that it turns off the ring, okay? And then the last thing is it removes my tag of tunnel, so as soon as I'm not in that tunnel, it will stop giving me the tag and I won't have the tag anymore. Uh, that's all there is, really. I mean, it's really simple when you think about it. Uh, it's five command blocks, but it's the, the hard part is... The hardest part about this one is thinking about how to solve it, solve the problem. Your problem is you want to make a tube that has the player follow it. What is the easiest way? I believe this is the easiest way to do so, um, to solve the problem. But the, the hardest part about command blocks really is figuring out what to do and knowing what to do at the right time with the right commands. So that was a really quick one, guys. I'm, I hope that this was useful to you. If you have other kind of lighting situations, you can use these kind of methods to do stuff with them. Uh, I hope you do find this useful for some kind of adventure map maybe you plan on doing in the future. I'm going to have some 60-minute maps that I made for a recent tournament up for you guys to download, which actually one of them is a prequel to A Weekend in Hartsville, which I am working on the sequel to right now, uh, and then I'll be working on the sequel to Quantum Labs. Uh, but anyways, guys, thanks for showing up. I'll see you in any future live streams because I do. I'm back to live stream on the weekends. And uh, yeah, so thanks for watching and I'll catch you all later.